Hello, my name is Ray Salazar, and this is Morning Real, a three-minute or four-minute or a hundred-minute or so podcast of films that I review, whether they just won an Academy Award, a Venice Award, TIFF Award, a Razzie, a South Central Film Festival Award. Shout out to the South Central Film Festival. Today is Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Shout out to all the moms in the world. Shout out to all the people who are moms, whether they're female or not. Got to give love. Got to give credit where credit is due. Being that it's Mother's Day, I chose a film that revolves around motherhood. At least to me, it revolves around motherhood in a sense. The film is called Parallel Mothers, directed by Pedro Almodovar. In Spanish, the film is called Madres Paralelas. If you know anything about Pedro Almodovar, a lot of his films revolve around motherhood, womanhood to be, to be quite exact. And this one is no different. This is his eighth collaboration with Penelope Cruz. Penelope Cruz and Pedro Almodovar are like Robert De Niro and Martin Scorsese. They just collab, make great films, so on and so forth. Anyways. The film was released on October 8th, 2021 in Spain, because this is a Spanish film, starring Penelope Cruz, Melena Smith, Israel Elejalde, Aitana Sanchez Guijón, Rosy de Palma, Julieta Serrano, and a lot of, there's a big, it's a big cast. Music by Alberto Iglesias, who, who did great music in this film. His music is kind of scary, even though this film isn't that scary. But there is suspense. Almodovar, he is known for melodramas. This film is no different from melodrama. This film is hard for me to like, to give some background, because I feel like the background itself can you know, spoil the whole fucking film and make you not want to watch it. But if you like Almodovar, if you like women, if you like the color red, you might want to watch this film because, again, Almodovar, he is known for his use of red in films. And I mean that, I mean like characters wearing red, characters using objects that have a lot of red in it or it's just like a solid shade of red. You see. I don't know. There's just a lot of red. In this film, film uh, the iPhone phone case, red. Um, Penelope Cruz's character, red cardigan, red baby stroller. The, the things that she photographs in the film, because in the film, she's a photographer. This film's a little different. Um, there's a lot of Spanish history history being thrown at you. I don't know too much about Spanish history. All I know is the Spanish Inquisition, the team with Real Madrid and Barcelona and all that crap. That's pretty much it. <laughs> but, all right. Let me see what I can do. Penelope Cruz, she's a photographer. She photographs all kinds of shit models objects she works for an agency that's ran by her best friend she has a photo session with this forensic archaeologist or anthropologist i don't know i'm guessing an anthropologist and she couldn't help but strike up a conversation with this person because i guess her whole goal in the film is to find out her ancestry. Her grandmother is still alive. Her undying wish is to be buried with her grandparents. But their grandparents, well, her, her great-grandfather, the undying wish of the grandmother is to be buried with her parents. But her father is yet to be found because back in the Spanish Civil War, there were a lot of unwanted casualties people died for no reason so there is a generation where 
nobody knows where their great grandparents were, how they lived, you know, like where were they buried and shit. So it means a lot to Penelope Cruz's character. That's the that's all the background I need to give you. But I guess the main plot. I guess the main plot is that she gets knocked out from this guy. It just cuts to her nine months being in the hospital about to give birth and she meets this woman who's 17 and she's about to give birth too and the 17 year old is helpless she has a mom who is trying to be a a broadway actress she actually gets a a shot to be in a in a well-produced tour around play and she has to take it because this is her only shot. She's been, quote unquote, working whole, her whole life for a moment like this. The 17 year old Penelope Cruz, they form a bond because they're mothers, or I guess now they're mothers. And all I got to say, shit happens in the film. There is a big twist in the middle of the second act. Well, not in the middle of the second act, but like in the beginning of the second act. There is this twist that even when I saw it, I immediately sat up and I just couldn't help but wonder what the fuck was going to happen. And I mean, this is where Almodovar gives you his like his greatest like his greatest strengths as a as a writer and as a director because. These two actresses really put in their work. They really make you feel like they are moms in their own way. They're two different people. Two different people. But the instinct of motherhood kicks in, and it kicks in like a bat out of hell. And I dig it. I'm not going to take too much time to talk about this film as far as, like, you know, like, the plot, because... I can't, I just can't give it away. I can't. It would, it's, it's, it's a type of plot where like, I just never thought it would go right there and it did. And I feel like it's a thing that, that has been talked about before, not only through social media, but like, it's been talked about, like, just like in, in the media period, you know, I can't say what it is cause you got to see it, but I feel and believe it to be an occurrence that that can happen and does happen. And the film does shed light on, on, the, on that type of subject matter. Either way, um, I love the cinematography in this film. It's pretty good. Everything is bright. Everything is so... The saturation is, is perfect, I feel. You know, the reds are really red. Another critic said that they should name a a lipstick after Almodovar's use of red. And it's out there. If you hear in the background, that is a Honda S2000. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm doing this live from from the home. Hear the beautiful birds and all that crap in the traffic. Either way, Almodovar places his camera in certain places and interiors where i feel it's it's a little awkward but it kind of fits the the tone of the certain scenes that are being presented to me in the film and i ask myself if this film is even shot on location or at a at a studio i mean for the most part it's shot on location because it is outdoorsy for some part but for the interiors I guess one could say it's inside a, inside a studio. Either way, I am convinced about its location and setting and how the cameras work. The use of lighting is great. It's, to me, it's very naturalistic because I feel like all the melodrama is not in the lighting. It's all in the acting and the writing, of course. Writing is great. The only thing I don't really like about the film, because this film, this film is near perfect this film is a lot this film has won a lot of awards it felt weird for it, it felt a little weird for me 
and I think I get it that once the babies were born, all of it just simply shift to the motherhood aspect of the film. And then somehow in the third act, it just switches all about the ancestry, all about the excavation. I don't know. I feel like he could have mixed it a little bit more in some way. But like I said, I understand why he did it. And I think he wanted to focus mainly on motherhood. And, and yeah, man. Um, <clears throat> Mother Nature. You can't defeat Mother Nature. Mother Nature tells you no lie. And I do like how he mixed in the aspect of Mother Nature to motherhood in general. Because I guess when you're a mom... Not only is life a bitch, but I think the job of the mother is to nurture, is to teach, and the things that surround us teach us, and that's what I got out of that film overall. Follow me at IG and YouTube at Morning Shot Films, rate and review this podcast. Rate and review this episode. Shout out to all the moms. I do take suggestions. Suggestions at officialmorningreal at gmail.com. Coming up this month of May, I will be reviewing The Notebook because its anniversary is coming up. Ooh. I will also be reviewing Brokeback Mountain. Can't wait for that one. That one's going to be with Xavier. I don't know how he feels about Brokeback Mountain. I don't know if you've seen it. I think he has. I think he hasn't. I don't know. I don't care. But we're going to do it either way. I'm also going to be reviewing Whiplash with Cypress Hill's Eric Bobo. He wanted to come on. And I said, you know what? Let's do Whiplash. And I think I might do The Sound of Metal separately on my own. I don't know. But it's on Prime. It's free. I have Prime. It's free. Why not? You can watch the film Parallel Mothers on all kinds of streaming apps, including YouTube, which is where I saw it. And if you want to watch it in Ultra HD, which is 4K, to you layman terms people, it's right there for five ninety nine to rent. To me, it's worth it. To me, it's a film that you should watch with your mom. It's, it is a film about women, and I like it. I like that Almodovar is one of the few directors out there in the world that gives representation to women equally to men, if not more. Because to be honest, there's a lot of more men in filmmaking than women. And during this time, it has changed. And I like to see that. Shout out Jane Campion. 